That's my money gone, going on a bit. I've never been in so much debt in my life. Stuck in a rut. What's the point in getting up early? I haven't got anything to get up early for. Or just want more. Two days a week I have to do this, digging shit out of a hole. But now... They have the chance of escape. Around the world, there are manual jobs where young people can strike payday gold. There's definitely some good money to be earned. It sort of comes down to the individual and how much money do you want to make. A couple of years ago, I made 100 grand in 36 days. The catch? They're some of the toughest jobs on the planet. Uh, covered in cow shit 24-7. And if they're not shitting on you, they're running at you. It's like being on the prison. But you haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> Now, young Brits in need of a cash injection are not coming home until I have that money. Are being given the chance to earn the big bucks. Getting kicked, getting head footed. Mental. That's the brutalest job I've ever done in my life. And it's no good complaining because we don't give a shit. <laughs> and it could change more than just their bank balance. <laughs> Who would have thought I'd be doing that ever in my lifetime? The question is can they stand the pace? Why is there nuts and shit in here? I will shove a fish down his throat. Or will the punishing world of manual labour... Ah, Red! I can't do it. I can't handle this. It's hurting me. ...send them screaming back to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> just desperately want to go home. Meet Stephen, Darcy and Dom. Three young Brits desperate to get their lives in order and make some serious cash. When I left the army, I had about 20 grand saved up. No debts, <laughs> no pills. Uh, now I'm in about seven grand in debt. Uh, I'm pretty much desperate now. I do need the money I need to provide for my little girl. I use a payday loan. I pay it back when I get paid next, and then I'm back to square one with no money because I paid the payday loan. Now I'm going to have to use a payday loan again. Oh, God, I'm in the bar. Ah! I am so stressed out with my financial situation. I know so much. Like, I've not got work anymore, so every month I don't get anything. Now they have the chance to seriously raise their earnings, if they can handle some seriously high-level grafting. Skyscraper window cleaning in Canada. A profession fraught with danger. The moment you don't feel fear is the moment you're going to mess up and you're going to go plummeting into the ground. On the shores of Lake Ontario lies Canada's commercial capital, Toronto. It's a city of windows where daredevils in the sky risk it all to earn hard cash. You could fall right off here and die in a second if you're not safe. Daydreaming. Not being focused on the job, not paying attention to the weather, it may kill you. When something goes wrong in the air, you find God and you try not to wet yourself. You've got to be a little bit crazy. You've got to love your life on the line. If you love to be in the situations when, when you make a mistake, you die, this is the job for you. Every year, thousands of Brits land Canadian work visas and head west. One of the best paying manual jobs is cleaning skyscrapers. If you are good at this, you have the ability to earn forty to sixty dollars an hour. You can earn up to two thousand dollars a week. The sky's the limit. The best part about this job would be the money, I'd say, and the view. Nobody else gets a view like I get every morning. The industry attracts young rookies every year, but not everyone can hack it. After a day's work, okay, there's going to be muscles that are going to ache on them that they never even knew they had. Now I'm thinking, like, what have I got myself into? <laughs> There's plenty of people in the world, there's no way they can do this job. What if I pass out? Oh my god. What if I fell? What if I dropped? <gasps> I won't look down, I'll just keep focusing on the people and maybe give them a little Beyonce, a little hand gesture and they might be like, you're so brave. I'll take anything, huh? Need the cash, don't I? <laughs> Dom, Darcy and Stephen have each been offered a job for three weeks. Starting at the bottom, they could earn up to £400 per week. Bernard, I'll see you on the other side. But armed with one-year Canadian work visas, the three Brits have the opportunity to extend their stay.
the man they will need to impress is British expat Neil Dance. The boss of the cleaning company, he has lived in Canada for 25 years. I'm expecting a lot from these British workers. The more they work, the more money they make. That's it, period. Hi there. Darcy? Yeah. yeah. I'm Neil Dance. How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> Good to meet you. If they get to stay, their earnings could climb up to £1,000 per week. Hello. Who are you? I'm Don. Nice arm, sir. <laughs> We're going to put those to work, trust me. Thanks. As long as they're not for show and they're good for scrubbing. Uh, OK. Hi there. Hi, you all right? Yeah, man, I'm great. And your <laughs> name is? Steve. Hi, my name's Stan. Hi, I'm Darcy. Nice Hi. to meet you. Uh, hello, mate. Nice to meet you. Is anyone breaking it or is it just me? I don't think it's hit me yet. It'll probably hit me when I'm up here, but not now, has yeah. it? No. I'm not scared, like, on a plane. But, like, if it's scared. like going up a ladder, <laughs> I'm probably like, I'm gonna poo. Like, I'm gonna poo in my pants. 18 year old Stephen from Merseyside is no stranger to airports. He's studying to achieve his life's ambition. In the future, I want to be a trolley dollar. This is my favourite bit of my course in Cabin Crew. Um, it's like a flight stimulator set up, basically. Hello, you're all right. Would you like to see your coffee? Like, seriously, like, I just love it. Like, I love doing the safety demonstration. You can do it sexy as you want. Like, you can't do that on the bigger airlines of it, but maybe at a lot of cost, you might be able to get away with it. But pursuing his dream has got Stephen in serious debt. Oh, God. And now he desperately needs to earn some money. Oh, ah, oh. oh, God. I actually need to be able to afford my driving lessons and then I have to get a car so I can actually get to the airport for like three o'clock in the morning. And then low cost airlines, they actually make you pay hundreds of pounds just for like training to the cabin crew. I'm in debt with college, I'm in debt with like phone bills, I took like an overdraft out, and then I owe my mum like more than 400. And at the moment, my income is zero, nothing. I'm not on benefits or anything, so it's quite difficult. I'm living off like my mum really. Would you like any sugar? With the money he earns in Canada, Stephen hopes to fuel the next stage of his trolley dolly dream. Hi ladies, would you like to see your coffee? But money isn't his only motivation. Since coming out at 15, things haven't been straightforward with all members of Stephen's family. Why would you want to go into a job that's really difficult? I do feel like I have to prove something to some people that I am tough and stuff and not just a flamboyant... Wimp. Wimp. He used to be close to his dad, but since coming out, he feels that dad's distanced away from him. So I think it may be proof to dad as well, because all he wants is to be loved, I think, past you. I will prove it more like by doing a manly job. Now in Toronto, Stephen has the opportunity to show himself and others what he's really made of. He cries at lifting furniture, so God help him doing windows. <laughs> when I saw you, I was like, oh God, he's a manly man, he's going to be like, get away, stay. <laughs> For the first time, the three Brits get a view of the skyline, which will be their workplace for the next three weeks. How high are these buildings? Right. So on average, we're working around seven to eight hundred feet. Oh. Okay. Oh. Right. Am I actually going to be able to do this? I'm not. Oh God! Look at that! Look at that! Oh, God. oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> <laughs> Twenty-two-year-old Londoner Darcy had a difficult start in the UK. It definitely wasn't easy, like as an immigrant family, living in and out of B and Bs when we first got here. It was really horrible. We cramped one bedroom. I remember fighting with my brothers like who'd sleep on what side and kind of things like that. As they grew up, money was always tight, and in her teens, she started getting into debt. When I first took a payday loan out. I was eighteen. Who would give a payday loan to an 18-year-old? Seriously. Now studying and still paying off her loans, Darcy is stuck at home. The only way I could pay off my payday loans was to use my student loans. That's why I couldn't move out like everybody else did when they went to uni and college and things like that, because I had debts to pay off. But money isn't the only thing keeping Darcy at home. 
feel like I'm responsible to help my mum. Like, with the family around the house, with my brothers. Darcy's pretty much like the gel that kind of holds the family together. It always has been like that. This will be Darcy's first time away from the family and her first taste of independence. I want to learn to take care of myself. I need to kind of like break free from like my family. I'm still kind of scared because all I know is being here. But I guess that's the whole part of growing. It is, it is a good idea. This, this would be a great chance like, just to just push myself over the edge, literally. For the new recruits, it's straight to work. Neil wants them to experience what it takes to be a skyscraper window cleaner. This is their make or break day. I'm going to be taking them up to the 48th floor of the Bay Wellington Tower. I'm going to be looking for their reaction to see if they're going to go white knuckle on me. If they can't handle it, that's them done. I don't need them. The three Brits know this job demands a head for heights. But none of them have ever stepped outside at over 600 feet before. So come on now. So here we are, guys. So you're in a safe position now, and I want you to look over my shoulders. OK, and what do you see? Windows. And do you know what we do? We clean those windows. Every window represents a daughter. So follow me, guys. Come on. I'm going to show you where you guys are going to go in a minute. You're All right. hilarious. Oh, You're fucking Matt, hilarious. On. Your glasses? Oh, yeah. So, I just step over the tracks. Oh, the and I'm on the edge of the building. What are you doing? OK. And I can have a nice experience being on the edge here, looking over. <laughs> I can look over this way, I can do... <laughs> right, OK? So, who's going to go first? Me first. <laughs> OK. OK, come on over. No problem. Here we go. OK, so... Whoa. <laughs> this is the city of Toronto. OK, all right. See the yeah. people? Don't they look like regular size, man? Hey, yeah. like, what the hell? Yeah. Okay, have a look. Yeah. Come on there. Can you reach? <laughs> yeah, come on. You can go yeah. further. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. So, some stage of the game, you're going to be playing on one of these buildings. Wow. All right? I can't explain that feeling, man. It's, no? I can't. I just feel like a fucking a load of energy just rushing through my body. Twenty-five-year-old Dom has a history of seeking adventure. <laughs> when I was younger, I always used to play army. <laughs> My mates with toys, action man. I didn't want to go to college, so I joined the army at sixteen. Dom served in Northern Ireland, Belize, and did two tours of Afghanistan. It's an adrenaline rush. A lot of us were like, oh, "We can't wait till our next one." Everyone's looking forward to their first contact. <laughs> Pretty much all of us, we enjoyed it. But after fighting it out with the Taliban and leaving the army, Dom moved back in with his mum and had to take a job selling double glazing. It's like going from one extreme to something that's just so boring and mundane and just grim. It's a bit of a come down, massive come down. I could see the difference in him from when he came he first came out of the army, he was quite quiet and quite reserved. Their policy was uh, you got four weeks to make at least one sale, but they got rid of me in three weeks, so I must have been pretty shit. Now Dom spends his time on a desperate job hunt. I've been looking for gym work, warehouse work, also a bit of labouring, cleaning. <laughs> I thought, as a soldier, uh, serving a country, you'd get a job straight away. That being on your CV, uh, a lot of people would want to snap you up, but it doesn't work like that. The bills are mounting up, and he's heavily in debt. Here's one from Halifax, credit card. Uh, 4,417. That's my favourite one, yeah. But Dom doesn't just have to worry about himself. Faster, faster. Although he doesn't live with two-year-old Lexi and her mum, he takes his role as a dad very seriously. Yeah! Not being able to provide for my daughter as I want to, and as I should be able to, is quite heartbreaking to me. It's uh, it's upsetting, most of all it's upsetting, yeah. You can see all the way down to the street level. Dom has a chance to try a new career and finally make some money. The biggest reason I need a job is to support my family. I haven't felt out alive since I was uh, in Afghan, when I was getting shot at. OK. 
Now it's Darcy's turn. Take my hand, baby. Having previously only worked in retail, she's way out of her comfort zone. That's it. Come on, the yellow one. Perfect. OK, come on, you can do it. All right, lean forward. <laughs> See, it wasn't that bad, was it? OK. Oh, don't move me too quickly. Ah. Oh, fuck. No, come on, you've got lots of room no, here. No, Look. Don't yes, you do. Don't touch the rope. <laughs> don't fucking touch the rope. I never touch the rope. Put your foot oh. here. Come on, come on. Sorry, I'm no, no, you can hold on to me you. if you want. No, it's OK. I can understand. Despite her nerves, she's keen to get a souvenir. Ready? You want that selfie? You go for it, bud. Because I'm not going to do this again. Oh, you are. Which leaves Steve. I just had a little prayer. A little prayer, yeah? It's always good to have a little prayer sometimes. Steve, you're going to do it. Let me just pretend I'm doing coming here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just getting <laughs> off the craft <laughs> craft for you and saving all your lives. Right. You're good? Okie dokie. <sighs> Spider-Man. Still connected, remember? We showed that you oh, were connected. Oh, fucking hell. Okay, oh. so. All right. <gasps> You're all right, bud. You're all right. There you go. <laughs> peek over, peek over. No, you can get a little closer. Come oh, on. Come over. Come. My pan? No, you're not. Come here, come here, come here, come here. All right, so now look over the city. That was okay. <laughs> Checked already. You're all good. Okay. All right, lean into it, lean into it. Look, like I'm doing a pause. Yeah, posed. I've always wanted to be in my doll. They're there laughing at me in the offices out there. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> I think it. they're actually working. Oh, it is a long way from home. And it's a long, like, way from, like, ground as well. Like... Oh, fuck. I don't want to hug. But the experience has provoked more than just a fear of heights for Stephen. I feel like, oh, uh, I'm just a wimp. You're not a wimp. The first question I would ask is, who's your judge? Who's judging you as a wimp? Who do you think? My uncles, my dad. Steve, who's here right now calling you a wimp? I'm you. No, but that's the thing. Listen. So you're you're your own judge right now, buddy. Don't Look. cry. <laughs> don't cry. Listen, I don't know why you care about what people think so much. I used to be like that. It didn't get me nowhere. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about me. They can suck a dick. That's not my problem. Yeah. Come. Don't cry. Okay. You're not a wimp. So don't say that again, or else I'll beat you up. Got it? Cheer up. I think they realise that this isn't just a walk in the park. And I think Steve is going to be the troubled child for getting over the edge of the building. He needs his confidence built up and, um, you know, he'll get over it. He has to, as he isn't going to have a job. From the safety of their hostel, the new arrivals anticipate the weeks ahead. I think Steve and Dom and me will be able to do the job. I don't know, we're all, like, we've all got different personalities and we're very strong-minded, like, in our own way. I've been out of work for a while. Oh, I'm raring to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I can't wait to get out there. I'm just feeling too, like, overwhelmed with everything. Like, I've never felt like this, like, for a long time. But this is getting me really, like, overwhelmed, like, seriously. Did I pack my straightener? Yeah. It's 7am in Toronto and time to get ready for work. Neil has a team of 60 working on buildings across the city. The new recruits will be starting with the basics. Learning on the job with Tristan. And the first task is mastering the tools of the trade. The fewer movements we make, the easier it is. One window might seem easy, but it gets slightly more difficult when there are thousands of them to clean and you're dangling on a skyscraper. It's not as easy as, uh, as it looks. <laughs> not bad for your first attempt with the left. Do you think so? Yes, I think you have natural talent. One, down, bend, up, down, and swipe. And I can't fucking get rid of that bit again. I wouldn't be happy if my window cleaner did that to me. It's now time to tackle the grime outside. For speed, Tristan needs the new recruits to use both their hands when they're cleaning. Left hand for the left window, right hand for the right window. Oh, I can't do left. Oh. You will, at the end of this session, be 
neither left-handed nor right-handed. Oh, for goodness sake. You're making it a little more complicated than it has to be. Nice turns. Oh, seriously, I'm not in the mood. Like, I get frustrated easily. I just can't do window cleaning. Like, I don't know why I've been doing this. Like. You sound like you're convincing yourself that you can't do this. Because I know I can. It's too hard. No, it's not too hard. My left hand doesn't function. I'm, uh, I'm not practicing. a bit of practice. This seemingly simple task has triggered old insecurities for Steve. <laughs> Can't wait, man. They just. Just don't feel intimidated. I just don't feel comfortable in my kid. With like other men, I just I fainted it like with school, like going into like sports. I fucking hate it like working with men, like getting bullied on kids, we courses like everywhere. I just don't like working with men. And I just feel like they're taking the mick out of me because I just can't. I'm not practical. Dom's getting all like fucking, oh yeah, you're doing good. I can't fucking window clean it for shit. Fucking shit. Like I don't like it. I've never been this emotionally stupid. Since his father left the family home when he was a baby, Stephen has gone through tough times without a close male figure in his life. I came out to my dad um, by text message, and that was like a few months later of coming out to like my mom and my family and my friends because I felt like he would be the la like the last one to like accept it. I got a text back saying, "Is this a phase?" And then um, the like the connection between us started going. I just don't think. I, well, I personally don't think that he accepts it that much. Maybe doing, like, a tough job will actually, like, show him that actually I'm quite careful. I'm still, like, a man. I'm still, like, his son. After work, Neil wants to see how his new recruit has been doing. Today was the first time you really tried oh, to use yeah. a squeegee, right? So what sort of expectations did you put on yourself? I just thought, like... It would be easier. Yeah. Like, yeah like, so it, what did I like, tell you day one? I told you day one, it looks like it's really easy, right? But it actually takes some form of skill. You're not going to learn that over time. I'm scared of, like, if I'm annoying everyone more, like, because, like, I can't do it. And I just, who no, gives like, a I fuck I who you annoy? Like, I, don't, I don't care who you annoy. Remember, time, practice will get you there, baby. It's just doing me, I think, because I know, like, oh, I've got yeah, all the skills. Yeah, 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 but... Stop right there. Right now, you're moving beyond today. I'm asking you to be patient, and I'm asking you to believe in you. Right, OK? Yeah. So don't listen to anybody else. In fact, don't even listen to you. Just listen to my instructors and listen to me. Right, OK? And clean a window. Period. That's it, baby. All right? Yeah. <laughs> Ow. Over the next few days, Stephen is out with the ground crew. You're gonna put more into it, put more shoulder in it. My muscles are not used to this. If I get a tan, I'll, I'll be fine. Time is money, buddy. You gotta keep going here. As are Dom and Doss. You gotta put your back into it more, Dom. That's it, that's it. Did I do it? You did, you did. Get in! Doing it here is one thing, but doing it up in the sky is a whole nother ball game. Guys, we're going to take a look at the future you. Now they've mastered cleaning, Tristan wants them to see what they'll be doing next. And we see a set of ropes. And we see a oh person up there. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I can't do that. Like... <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. She's going to fall. Stop. Oh. Be careful. Oh, my God. <laughs> Be careful. And at this point, it's just business as usual. Wash your window, squeegee your window. Oh, it's hurting my head looking at her. <laughs> oh, my God. Why is she swinging so much? Oh, oh, she's swinging. Oh, fuck off. Do you guys think you can do that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Back at their hostel, 
they have a well-deserved night off. It feels hard. Wait, tell me how far up. Say when. There, because if you go too far up, it'll hurt. No, that's it. It hurts. The vein in your head's starting to come out. Oh, my God. When does the burning come? When does the burning come? After days of unfamiliar hard work, Stephen's body is paying the price. That's it! Oh, sorry. Oh, my God. That, like, seriously. No, 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 no. Oh. Feel better? I fucking feel worse. That's it. Oh, I'll be <laughs> ungrateful shit. Going over the edge of a building for the first time is the scariest moment for any skyscraper window cleaner. Oh, you're done? And now it's the Brits' turn to take that leap. Here See you guys. Uh, Nancy. Okay, so you're going to go over the wall with uh, Christoph today? Are you all looking forward to it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> no. What? I'm going to go off this to just get it out of the way. So you're going to be the first one over the wall? Well, well done. I like the fact that you jumped to the plate. Then I'll just throw it over the edge. The bosun's chair is a short wooden plank suspended by ropes. It takes nerves of steel. But to make the big money, it has to be mastered. Well, I'm doing the teeth chattering thing. How <laughs> am I going to sit in that like seems like? How am I going to get off the edge? It's scary. It's like, I'm, I don't want to commit. Like, I don't really want to die. OK, Stephen. <laughs> to get into the chair, you need to climb over the edge and push yourself off the wall to sit down. Oh, Christoph. Go, go. You're good. Everything's fine. But at over 100 feet in the air, it's a huge challenge. Oh. Uh, OK, hold on. I'm going to stand here and just in case I hold you, OK? Yeah. Go. I got you. You're not falling anywhere. Go, stand on your chair. Go, go. Is that money? Go. Oh, for... Stand on it. Hold that all. You OK? Oh, it's moving side to side. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Now I'm going to sit on my chair and I show you that. I'm shaking. We make the... Yeah, that's fucking perfect. Oh. That's... You've got to sleep. Your legs in. And then you got to sit in. Uh, so, look, move your chair off. Slip your, slip your foot in there. Uh, can I just foot. keep holding? Slip your foot in. Slip your foot in. Now the other one. Now the other one. Oh, the other one. I'm slipping it. Slip it in. Slip it in. There you go. Good. Good. Ah! Oh, my yeah, God. There you go. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Stephen must guide himself down the building. Just descend slowly. Christoph has his own way of making new workers learn that they're safe in the chair. What was I saying, Darth? Oh! <laughs> oh, Christoph! <laughs> Christoph, I nearly fell off the swing then. It's all good, man. Oh, I nearly cried then. <laughs> okay. Oh, you're making me like I'm swinging more. So look, see how you're, now you're comfortable swinging. Yeah. Christoph's methods might seem extreme. I'm getting more comfortable. I'm quite shocked still that I'm, like, dangling off a building on a rope. I'm swinging, like... <laughs> Having got to grips with the chair, Stephen returns to Earth. There you go. Oh, you did it, man. I did you it. You did it. I just felt like I actually achieved something that I would never, ever, 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 ever do. He forced himself to do it, and he's a brave man. He was terrified, and he said, fuck it, I'm gonna do it, and he did it. Yeah. Great I'm a job. brave man. Talking to like the other male trainers, which I'm not used to, has really like had like a big impact on me. And having them there saying you can do this, I'm really proud of you. You've you've gone so far. That's just like a really nice thing hearing that from like a man. Okay, let's go. Next up, Dom. <laughs> okay, now just go over the edge. Hang yourself on your belly. Find the chair. You almost there? Yeah, you almost there, man. Where is it? Sit on your chair. <sighs> Go on, Don. All right, all right, that good. That is hard, that is it. Let me just get used to this. I'll swing about a bit. You good? Yeah. OK. The ex-soldier might be used to keeping a calm exterior. You're doing really good, Don. Thank you. But Christoph needs to push Don further. Yeah. I've got... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cheers for that, Christoph. Oh, any time, right, buddy. Don. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, fine, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Christoph, you need to be egg. I think you're natural on the rope. You're right to be a bit nervous. Yeah, of course, that's normal. But I think, you know, a couple of weeks of practice and you're going to be making good money at it. I think you're, you're going to do good. Now it's Darcy's turn. Slide your legs in. Slide them in. And she gets into position with ease. There you go. You did it. <laughs> oh, my God, look at Dan. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I thought I was going to be more nervous than this. Your hand in between for yeah. But even with the safety rope attached, when she starts to descend... Oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, no, 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 no. I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared. Everything's fine. Something changes for Darcy. The hardest part was going over the edge. This is nothing. See? It's perfect. It's fine. You're doing fine. That's normal. Oh, my God, oh, my God, no. It's on good. It bounced. It fucking bounced. You're hanging off the ropes, of course it's gonna bounce. Everything's fine. Oh my God. Now they're both over the edge. There's no way back up. I'm right here. See, I'm right here. Everything's fine, you say. Oh, why the fuck did I sign up for this? You're doing great. Okay, can we just get down? Don't panic. Just take deep breaths. Don't panic. You're doing great. You're doing great. I'm sorry because I feel like I'm going to have a panic attack. Still more than 80 feet above ground, Darcy is now in full meltdown. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Everything's fine. OK. Oh, it's swinging. Yeah, of course. That's oh, my God. No, it's swinging. It's like you're on a swing. Oh, please, you're shaking me. OK, we're almost done. We're almost done. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm going to get out. You go, go down. That is the only way you can get off is to go down, Darcy. Inch by inch. Oh my God, oh my God. Christoph helps Darcy to lower herself down the rope. Keep going, stand up. You're on the F. Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. I'm never doing that again. I honestly thought that this, we're going to have to rescue her. It was insane. It was, uh, yeah, it, it was definitely the most scariest rookie I ever had. Darcy, second time's gonna be easy. I'm not doing it again. Don't give up after the first time because it was hard. I'm not doing it again. I almost had a panic attack on me. I'm not doing it again. You did fine, though. You're I gonna do it better. I tried my fucking eyes out. Darcy has battled with anxiety since she was young, but she's had to hide it. On the outside, I show... I have to show that I'm strong and tough. Because if I show that I'm vulnerable all the time, then people are going to kind of, like, see it and then take advantage. And I don't want that. So my God will always be up as far as I'm concerned. Darcy, her mum and brothers struggled as refugees in the UK. But five years after they arrived, Darcy's father was finally able to join the family. When my dad came, it was, it was, it was really fun. For those first five months he was there, or should I say those last five months, it was, it was good. But he passed away on Boxing Day in 2001. I think we got the call on the, on Christmas night. Like, I think, like, my mum just, yeah. I think the whole street heard her scream. Darcy felt she had to stay strong to keep her family together. I have to be tough about it, but... Yeah. Sometimes when I want to cry, I do kind of cry, just not around people. Now she's desperate to be independent and work away from home. But not being able to handle the chair means her job prospects could hang in the balance. I'm not doing the person's chair again. I'm going to speak to Neil and see what else he can, like, sort out for me. We'll see, like, if he's got, like, another job or another way for me to earn money. Hi there. Neil needs to know what's going on with Darcy and what can be done about it. I felt like I was okay when I first got over the yep, wall. Yep. But then, like, the descending and stuff like that, I started to panic. All righty, well, listen. You had this strength to go over the side of the building, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what we're going to do, Darcy? We're going to throw you in a swing stage and see how that happens. Because we've got to get you producing, okay? Don't discount what you can and can't do right now, okay? You think about it tonight, and then tomorrow it's a brand new day and we can start again, okay? Okay. All righty? You good with that? Yeah. <laughs> right on, man.
It's halfway through their stay in Canada, and things are set to get tougher for the three Brits. Before work, Dom finds time to call his daughter. Hello, Poppet. Oh, <laughs> how are you? You look pretty. Daddy loves you. You gonna blow me a kiss? <laughs> it makes my day talking to her. All three are now heading for different locations out in the field, working alongside the pros. How are you doing, man? Dom will be swinging in a bosun's chair off a tricky 17-storey building. He should be shitting himself. <laughs> he will be once he gets his ass over the edge. Stephen is on groundwork. And Neil's given Darcy another chance to show she can handle heights, working on a swing stage with 25-year-old Brent. Hi, I'm Brent. I'm Darcy. Nice to meet you. Um, we're going to be cleaning this building today. Okay. Start from the roof, come down. Lots of work to do, so let's get started. The swing stage hangs from the roof of a building attached only by cables. For safety reasons, workers have to operate in pairs. Are we going to be swinging a lot? Just whatever we move, really. Good. Here, do you want to go first, Darcy? God. Oh, oh my God. Are you okay? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to go down. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's not bad. It's okay. Okay. Nope. Nope. No? No swinging. <laughs> you want to go back up? No, give it a second. Maybe I just need to adjust. Concentrate on the fucking windows. Don't look down. Don't look down. But the further the stage moves down, the more it swings out from the building. I feel like an old lady. Oh, God, Brent, you're making the fucking thing shake, please. Hey, do you want to go back up? Yeah. OK, we're going up. I'm really sorry, Brent. Darcy's fears have got the better of her again. Whew. It's swinging. It keeps swinging. The bosun chair was swinging. That's swinging. <laughs> oh. she, she's not too comfortable with the swinging of the stage. Brent calls the office for support. She had enough. Without a co-worker, he could lose out on a whole day's pay. Are you going to get another partner? I need at least one other person to be on the stage just for emergency purposes. Oh, sorry, I feel shit. No, no, don't. Seriously, if you can, you can. There is only one worker close by who might be able to help. Hi. Stephen. Swap over. He's been asked to step in for Darcy. I'm going to go there and I'll leave you two to it, yeah? Yeah, you'll like it on the floor. Later. Because... Hey, yeah. Uh... You'll be good, man. Oh, you're good. I should be on that floor right now. You won't get to the floor in no time, bro. No time. But Stephen, like Darcy, is a novice on the swing stage. So, ah, oh, Brent! Oh, fuck, that's made me, oh. You're good, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Gee, get all this, oh. I feel like, all right, actually. It's a, it's a bit um, when it moves, but to be honest, I've just got this thing in my mind today where I just have to get the job done. 200 feet from the ground, Stephen has 20 stories of windows to clean. Just getting used to the swing game. This is just like severe turbulence on a plane. I'm used to like, I need to be able to do this for a cabin crew, like as a flight attendant. I'd never go on an airplane. I've never been on an airplane. I'm terrified of them. See, Brent? I could help you to feel comfortable on the airplane. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of turbulence on board today. Please stay calm, breathe and relax. I've got it all sorted. Brent will get paid today after all, and Stephen will get paid $5.50 an hour extra for working high-rise.
Yeah, that's scary shit, but I'm just going to focus on my reflection, my beautiful face. <laughs> Steve helped me out big time, you know, uh, it was awesome, it was good of him, because otherwise I'd be sitting at home and <laughs> not doing anything, so he did good. Say when you're ready, good? <laughs> I think I did quite well today. People back home, they'd look at me and they'd be like, that you, stay. They'll actually have to blink or something because they'd be like, Steve doing this, like, come on, like, are you being serious? Me doing this. Across town, Dom has been tasked with cleaning the 17-storey metro centre on the bosun's chair. It's a notoriously tricky building to handle. There's some buildings out there that still, once you, when you get over the wall, you get a little chill up the ass. And this building's one of them, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Fucking hell. After getting over the top a first time, there's a difficult second ledge to negotiate. Oh. Oh, Fucking hell, boy. Oh, man. It's fucking scary, boy. Dom's now experienced enough to descend solo. I don't think it'll ever get boring for me. Because, uh... <laughs> even though I'm scared, it's still exciting. Even though I'm fucking shitting myself, it's still exciting. Even though these ropes sound like they're going to fucking snap, it's still exciting. I feel happy. I feel happy doing this. And it's been a long time since I felt happy doing the job. It's been three years since Dom left the army. I pretty much saw a lot. Yeah. People getting blown up and shot. That's what happens in war. I mean... <laughs> People get killed, don't they, in war. Since then, he's struggled adjusting to civilian life. I couldn't stay in a normal job for long. I could probably do it for a few months. It sort of eats you up and then you just think, why am I here? It's, uh, it's probably um, understand it a bit better if you've been through the same sort of thing. Wow. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> Neil also served in the British Army. Don wants to talk to him about how to move on. When I got out of the military, I felt totally lost and not able to fit into England. I could not live in the UK. And it was that experience of being rejected. I felt totally rejected by the UK at that time. I felt the same, really. When I left the Army, I sort of felt a bit lost. Yeah. didn't know what to do. It's up to you to get yourself together. And that's it, man. But use what they gave you. What did they give you? They gave you discipline. They gave you a way of organising stuff, right, OK? And a mindset to get forward. So they gave you something. You just have to take what they gave you from that setting and apply it to this setting, right, for you. You give me 100%, I give you 100%, OK? So I'm more than willing to get you into a space where you can be established here and you can feel comfortable and go to work. And then I leave it into your hands. I will just give you the opportunity, and it's up to you, right? And it, if you ever need a talk, I'm going to be there, man. Neil's offer of a permanent position, with the potential to earn up to £1,000 a week, leaves Don with a dilemma. To go home to his daughter, or stay in Canada and send money home. I think I can potentially earn a lot of money here and to be able to provide for my little girl, and he's given me a, a big opportunity here, so... And he's helped me get a lot of things off my chest as well, personal issues as well. So it's not just work-based. He's uh, helped me out with his other stuff. Before Dom has to make that decision, there's still a week of work ahead. Stephen and Darcy don't yet know if they'll be offered longer contracts. You guys are pretty cool, so... You wouldn't think that someone like me would get along with Dom, someone like Dom would get along with me, and then all of us getting along <laughs> together. Cos when I saw you, I was like, oh, she's gonna be loud, isn't she? She's... <gasps> Did then, you? All the way through this, you've been saying, I can't do this, I can't do that, but you actually get on with it. Yeah. And you actually do it. You underestimate yourself way too much. Like, you really do. People at home would say to me, oh, yeah, you can't do anything like that. 
it seems like you care too much about what people think. That's not the yeah. case. Yeah. It's like you want to show others that you're capable of doing this kind of I stuff be like, without caring about what yeah. they think. Yeah. The amount of time I've been here, I think you've done really well, mate. Yeah. Considering you've uh, been putting yourself down at the same time whilst doing it. Back at the hostel, Stephen is thinking about life when he does return home. I'm just writing, like, a letter to my dad. It's going to be difficult because this is, like, the first time I've ever told him how I'm feeling about not seeing him and stuff, so it's going to be quite... It's going to be tight and hard, but I need to tell him because this is what I've been thinking quite a lot. Hi, Dad. You're probably wondering why I'm sending you a letter. I'm currently in Canada working as a window cleaner. Being here has made me think a lot about how I want our relationship to be close and a proper dad and son relationship. I feel like we have distance away from each other since being young. And it has had a big impact on me as I like, older. I found it hard to actually say this to you. I just feel like I've not been able to talk to you. <laughs> and maybe, I don't know if that's why, one of the reasons that I feel so intimidated around men because I've never had the father figure around there. <laughs> like, I still love him. I love him lots. I love my dad. <laughs> more than three weeks in the job, it's time to get paid. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, Good to see you again, bud. <laughs> how are you? Oh, I'm great. So it's uh, the final paycheck today for you guys, eh? So I've got the money on me. So uh, let's go for it right now. Who do I have first? Darcy. All right, and there we go. Thank you very much. Thank you. They've each made between 990 and 1,100 pounds. Oh, shit, OK. <laughs> oh, wow, well, that's a lot, isn't it? Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah, it's a good start, yeah. I think it's a very good start. It's a fucking good start. <laughs> so first of all, guys, just thank you for making the effort, OK? Really appreciate it. And like I said, the door is open for you to come back, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Neil's been impressed and has given all three of them the option to stay on. Yeah, see you later. Got money. I can pay my bills. OK. Yeah. Dom would have the most to sacrifice. Yeah, it's been an emotional decision because it's quite heartbreaking to miss out on a lot. She's my my only little girl. Um, well, I'm going to miss 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 her, miss her little face, miss cuddling her. I think I've come to a decision. I'm going to stay here. Pop it. Yeah. <laughs> You're seeing Nanny on Monday, aren't you? I'm not going to be there. Daddy's going to be staying here for a bit. I'm not going to see you for a while, but when I come back, we'll have a good time, yeah? Yeah? Give me a kiss. Mwah. <laughs> Bye-bye, Lexi. Love you. It is a bit uh, upsetting. However, I think I'll be able to make uh, a better future for her if I stay here for a little while. But Dom's not the only one who's decided to stay. After her traumas in the air, Darcy's found success working in a team on the ground. I'm going to be working here for another couple of months. So I guess that's how much I like the job now. In your face three weeks ago, Darcy. Mr. Lewis, <laughs> there you go. Everybody I've met so far on this trip has definitely helped me and like pushed me further into becoming independent. Having anxiety, I'm always around people because I always depended on people. Yeah. Now, I think I can step into the real world safely and say, hey, I can make it on my own. Dom is thriving working in the bosun's chair. Today, he's on the 53-storey Canada Trust Tower. He's a little bit high, isn't he? 
everything's back on track now. I mean, um, the future looks a lot more positive than what it did. <sighs> However, yeah, I'm not going to be with my little girl as much, but she's got a good mum, and so looking after her. I'm sure I look back in time and I'll say, yeah, I made the right decision. Yeah, well, this is going to be my workplace for the next few months. It's quite, it's quite breathtaking, actually. I still can't believe I'm here. But given this, given this opportunity, it means a lot to me. It means a lot, so much. I think this, this job is, um, this job's for me. It's for me. has decided to go home and complete his cabin crew course. But before leaving, he has one more job, on the monumental 72-storey Scotia Plaza. Hello, Steve. Hello. Nice to meet you. I'm John. Hi, nice to meet you. John is a veteran window cleaner, and they'll be working 900 feet above street level. feeling really confident, to be honest. Yeah, you just have to do it, don't you? I like it. I'm dead proud of myself, like, really am. It's, like, a huge accomplishment, like, in my life. I fucking nailed it. Like, come on, let's be honest. I nailed it. And Stephen's enjoyed his day with a new workmate. Like, when I came here three weeks ago, I'd find, like, a guy like John really intimidating, I'd be dead scared to approach him and stuff. And now, like, I don't feel like that. Like, I don't feel intimidated. You, you held your own out there. We went all the way up to the boom. You didn't, you didn't panic, you didn't whimper, you didn't cry, you took it. Thank you so you much. You did a great job. Thank you. It means a Thank lot. Thank you. You did the work. Thank you. feel dead, like, confident, feel like I can be me, don't have to act like manly. So, yeah, I feel dead good, yeah. Two months later, back home in Merseyside, things have changed for Stephen. Since coming back, I'm up to date with all my bills. I'm really happy because I've not got no stress now. And I'm just... Oh, it's a relief. And the letter he wrote from Toronto has had an impact. So I got a text from my dad and it said, I'm proud of you, son, and see you soon, love, dad. We met up about a week later. And we just started talking about general stuff about me having a job and everything like that. It was just a general conversation, what, like, I dad on a Sunday. And it felt really good. From now, it's a good, positive step. So not looking back, I'm moving forward. There's a light in the tunnel, and I'm going to aim for that light. Next time, cattle ranching in Australia. <laughs> but will our Brits have a beef? It's a roaring good fun, a lot of adrenaline. They're unpredictable. Ugh. With one of the world's toughest jobs. Fuck off! I'm sweating, I'm so scared. And if you fancy the hatch... That's my money gone, going on a bit. I've never been in so much dirt in my life. Stuck in a rut. What's the point in getting up early? I haven't got anything to get up early for. Or just want more. Two days a week I have to do this, digging shit out of a hole. But now, they have the chance of escape. Around the world, there are manual jobs where young people can strike payday gold. There's definitely some good money to be earned. It sort of comes down to the individual and how much money do you want to make. A couple of years ago, I made 100 grand in 36 days. The catch? They're some of the toughest jobs on the planet. Uh, covered in cow shit 24-7. And if they're not shitting on you, they're running at you. It's like being on the prison. But you haven't done anything wrong. <laughs> now, young Brits in need of a cash injection... I'm not coming home until I have that money. ...are being given the chance to earn the big bucks. Getting kicked, getting head -footed. Mental. That's the cruelest job I've ever done in my life. And it's not even complaining because we don't give a shit. <laughs> and it could change more than just their bank balance. <laughs> Who would have thought I'd be doing that ever in my lifetime? The question is, can they stand the pace? 
Why is there guts and shit in here? I will shove a fish down his throat. Or will the punishing world of manual labour... Ah, Red! I can't do it. <laughs> I can't handle this. Certainly. Send them screaming back to the UK. <laughs> <laughs> I just desperately want to go home. <laughs> Meet Stephen, Darcy, and Dom. Three young Brits desperate to get their lives in order and make some serious cash. When I left the army, I had about 20 grand saved up. No debts, <laughs> no pills. Uh, now I'm in about seven grand in debt. Uh, I'm pretty much desperate now. <laughs> I do need the money I need to provide for my little girl. I use a payday loan. I pay it back when I get paid next, and then I'm back to square one with no money because I paid the payday loan. Now I'm going to have to use a payday loan again. Oh, God, I'm in the bar. Ah! I am so stressed out with my financial situation. I know so much. Like, I've not got work anymore, so every month I don't get anything. Now they have the chance to seriously raise their earnings, if they can handle some seriously high-level grafting. Skyscraper window cleaning in Canada. A profession fraught with danger. The moment you don't feel fear is the moment you're going to mess up and you're going to go plummeting into the ground. On the shores of Lake Ontario lies Canada's commercial capital, Toronto. It's a city of windows where daredevils in the sky risk it all to earn hard cash. You could fall right off here and die in a second if you're not safe. Daydreaming, not being focused on the job, not paying attention to the weather, it may kill you. When something goes wrong in the air, you find God and you try not to wet yourself. You gotta be a little bit crazy. You gotta love your life on the line. If you love to be in the situations when, when you make a mistake, you die. This is the job for you. Every year, thousands of Brits land Canadian work visas and head west. One of the best paying manual jobs is cleaning skyscrapers. If you are good at this, you have the ability to earn 40 to $60 an hour. You can earn up to $2,000 a week. The sky's the limit. The best part about this job would be the money, I'd say. And the view. Nobody else gets a view like I get every morning. The industry attracts young rookies every year. But not everyone can hack it. After a day's work, OK, there's going to be muscles that are going to ache on them that they never even knew they had. Now I'm thinking, like, what have I got myself into? <laughs> there's plenty of people in the world. There's no way they can do this job. What if I pass out? Oh, my God. What if I fell? What if I dropped? <gasps> I won't look down, I'll just keep focusing on the people and maybe give them a little Beyonce, a little hand gesture, and they might be like, you're so brave. I'll take anything, eh? Need the cash, don't I? Dom, Darcy and Stephen have each been offered a job for three weeks. Starting at the bottom, they could earn up to £400 per week. Bernard, I'll see you on the other side. But armed with one-year Canadian work visas, the three Brits have the opportunity to extend their stay. The man they will need to impress is British expat Neil Dance. The boss of the cleaning company, he has lived in Canada for 25 years. I'm expecting a lot from these British workers. The more they work, the more money they make. That's it, period. Hi there. Darcy? Uh, yeah. I'm Neil Dance. How are you? I'm all right. <laughs> Good to meet you. If they get to stay, their earnings could climb up to £1,000 per week. Hello. Who are you? I'm Don. Nice arm, sir. <laughs> We're going to put those to work, trust me. Thanks. As long as they're not for show and they're good for scrubbing. Uh, OK. Hi there. Hi, you all right? Yeah, man, I'm great. And your <laughs> name is? Steve Ray. Hi, my name's Steve. Hi, I'm Darcy. Nice Hi. to meet you. Uh, Hello, mate. Nice to meet you. Is anyone breaking it or is it just me? I don't think it's hit me yet. It'll probably hit me when I'm up here, but not now, has yeah. it? No. I'm not scared, like, on a plane. But, like, if it's scared. like going up a ladder, <laughs> I'm probably like, I'm going to poo. Like, I'm going to poo my pants. 18 year old Stephen from Merseyside is no stranger to airports. He's studying to achieve his life's ambition. In the future, I want to be a trolley dollar. 
this is my favourite bit of my course in Cabin Crew. Um, it's like a flight stimulator set up, basically. Hello, you're all right. Would you like to see your coffee? Like, seriously, like, I just love it. Like, I love doing the safety demonstration. You can do it as sexy as you want. Like, you can't do that on the bigger airlines, I bet, but maybe the lower cost, you might be able to get away with it. But pursuing his dream has got Stephen in serious debt. Oh, God. And now he oh. desperately needs to earn some money. Oh, ah. Oh, God. I actually need to be able to afford my driving lessons and then I have to get a car so I can actually get to the airport for, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. And then, low-cost airlines, they actually make you pay hundreds of pounds just for, like, training to be cabin crew. I'm in debt with college. I'm in debt with, like, phone bills. I took, like, an overdraft out. And then I owe my mum, like, more than 400. And at the moment, my income is... Zero. Nothing. I'm not on benefits or anything, so it's quite difficult. I'm living off, like, my mum, really. Would you like any sugar? With the money he earns in Canada, Stephen hopes to fuel the next stage of his trolley dolly dream. Hi, ladies. Would you like to see your coffee? But money isn't his only motivation. Since coming out at 15, things haven't been straightforward with all members of Stephen's family. Why would you want to go and do a job that's really difficult? I do feel like he has to prove something. To some people, that I am tough and stuff and not just a flamboyant... Wimp. Wimp. He used to be close to his dad, but since coming out, he feels that dad's distanced away from him. So I think it may be proof to dad as well. Because all he wants is to be loved, I think, Pasty. I will prove it, though, like, by doing a manly job. Now in Toronto, Stephen has the opportunity to show himself and others what he's really made of. He cries at lifting furniture, so God help him doing windows. When I saw you, I was like, oh God, he's a manly man, he's going to be like, <laughs> get away, stay. For the first time, the three Brits get a view of the skyline, which will be their workplace for the next three weeks. How high are these buildings? Right. So on average, we're working around seven to eight hundred feet. Oh. Okay. Um, right. Am I actually going to be able to do this? I'm not Oh God, look at that! Look at that! Oh, oh for fuck's sake! <laughs> Twenty-two-year-old Londoner Darcy had a difficult start in the UK. It definitely wasn't easy. Like, as an immigrant family, living in and out of B&Bs when we first got here, it was really horrible. We cramped one bedroom. I remember fighting with my brothers, like, who'd sleep on what side and kind of things like that. As they grew up, money was always tight. And in her teens, she started getting into debt. When I first took a payday loan out, I was 18. Who would give a payday loan to an 18-year-old? Seriously. Now studying and still paying off her loans, Darcy is stuck at home. The only way I could pay off my payday loans was to use my student loans. That's why I couldn't move out like everybody else did when they went to uni and college and things like that, because I had debts to pay off. But money isn't the only thing keeping Darcy at home. I feel like I'm responsible to help my mum, like with the family around the house, with my brothers. Darcy's pretty much like the gel that kind of holds the family together. It always has been like that. This will be Darcy's first time away from the family and her first taste of independence. I want to learn to take care of myself. I need to kind of like break free from like my family. I'm still kind of scared because all I know is being here. But I guess that's the whole part of growing. It is, it is a good idea. This, this would be a great chance like just push myself over the edge, literally. For the new recruits, it's straight to work. Neil wants them to experience what it takes to be a skyscraper window cleaner. This is their make or break day. I'm going to be taking them up to the 48th floor of the Bay Wellington Tower. I'm going to be looking for their reaction to see if they're going to go white knuckle on me. If they can't handle it, that's them done. I don't need them. The three Brits know this job demands a head for heights. But none of them have ever stepped outside at over 600 feet before. 
So come on out. So here we are, guys. So you're in a safe position now, and I want you to look over my shoulders. Okay, and what do you see? Windows. And do you know what we do? We clean those windows. Every window represents a daughter. So follow me, guys. Come on. I'm going to show you where you guys are going to go in a minute. You're All right. hilarious. Yes. You're fucking That's hilarious. Glasses on. Your glasses? Oh, yeah. So, I just step over the tracks. Oh, the oh, oh. And I'm on the edge of the building. What are you doing? Okay. And I can have a nice experience being on the edge here, looking over. I can look over this way. I can do... <laughs> right, okay. So... Who's going to go first? Me first. <laughs> okay. Okay, come on over. No problem. Here we go. Okay, so. Whoa. <laughs> this is the city of Toronto. Okay, all right. See the yeah. people? Don't they look like regular size, man? Hey, yeah. like, what the hell? Yeah. Okay, have a look. Yeah. Come on there. Can you reach? <laughs> yeah, come on. You can go yeah. further. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can do it. So, some stage of the game, you're going to be playing on one of these buildings. Wow. All right? I can't explain that feeling, man. It's, no? I can't. I just feel like a fucking a load of energy just rushing through my body. Twenty-five-year-old Dom has a history of seeking adventure. <laughs> when I was younger, I always used to play army. <laughs> my mates with toys, action man. I didn't want to go to college, so I joined the army at sixteen. Dom served in Northern Ireland, Belize and did two tours of Afghanistan. It's an adrenaline rush. A lot of us were like, oh, we can't wait till our next one. Everyone's looking forward to their first contact. <laughs> Pretty much all of us, we enjoyed it. But after fighting it out with the Taliban and leaving the army, Dom moved back in with his mum and had to take a job selling double glazing. It's like going from one extreme to something that's just so boring and mundane and just grim. It's a bit of a come down, massive come down. I could see the difference in him from when he came, he first came out of the army. He was quite quiet and quite reserved. Their policy was uh, you got four weeks to make at least one sale, but they got rid of me in three, so I must have been pretty shit. Now Dom spends his time on a desperate job hunt. I've been looking for gym work, warehouse work, also a bit of labouring, cleaning. I thought, as a soldier, uh, serving a country, you'd get a job straight away. That being on your CV, uh, a lot of people would want to snap you up, but it doesn't work like that. The bills are mounting up, and he's heavily in debt. Here's one from Halifax, credit card. Uh, 4,417. That's my favourite one, yeah. But Don doesn't just have to worry about himself. Although he doesn't live with two-year-old Lexi and her mum, he takes his role as a dad very seriously. Yeah! Not being able to provide for my daughter as I want to and as I should be able to, it's quite heartbreaking to me. It's, uh, it's upsetting, most of all it's upsetting, yeah. You can see all the way down to the street level. Dom has a chance to try a new career and finally make some money. The biggest reason I need a job is to support my family. I haven't felt that alive since I was uh, in Afghan when I was getting shot at. <laughs> OK. <laughs> now it's Darcy's turn. Take my hand, baby. Having previously only worked in retail, she's way out of her comfort zone. That's it. Go on, the other one. Perfect! OK, come on, you can do it. All right, lean forward. <laughs> See, it wasn't that bad, was it? Okay. Oh, don't move me too quickly. Ah. Oh, fuck. No, come on, you've got lots of room no, here. No, Look, don't yes, you do. Don't touch the rope. <laughs> don't fucking touch the rope. I never touch the rope. Put your foot oh. here. Come on, come on. Sorry, I'm no, sorry. no, you can hold on to me if you want. No, it's okay. I can understand. Despite her nerves, she's keen to get a souvenir. Ready? You want that selfie? You go for it, bud. Because I'm not going to do this again. Oh, you are. Which leaves Stephen. I just had a little prayer. A little prayer, yeah? Okay. It's always good to have a little prayer sometimes. Yeah. Steve, you're going to do it. Let me just pretend I'm doing kind of good, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just getting <laughs> off the curve how far you and saving all your lives. Right. You're good? Okie dokie. <sighs> Spider-Man. Still connected, remember? We showed that you oh, were connected. Oh, fucking hell. Okay, oh. so. All right. 
You're all right, bud. You're all right. There you go. <laughs> peek over. Peek over. No, you can get a little closer. Come oh, on. Come over. Come over. No, you're not. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. All right. So now look over the city. That was hilarious. <laughs> Checked already. You're all good. All right. Lean into it. Lean into it. Look. Like I'm doing a pause. Yeah. Posed. I've always wanted to be my doll. They there laughing at me in the offices out there. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> but I think they're actually working. Oh, it is a long way from home. And it's a long, like, way from, like, ground as well. Like... <sighs> Fuck. I don't want to hug. But the experience has provoked more than just a fear of heights for Stephen. I feel like, oh, uh, I'm just a wimp. You're not a wimp. The first question I would ask is, who's your judge? Who's judging you as a wimp? Like, my uncles, my dad. Steve, who's here right now calling you a wimp? I'm you. No, but that's the thing. So you're, you're your own judge right now, buddy. Don't cry. <laughs> don't cry. Listen, I don't know why you care about what people think so much. I used to be like that. It didn't get me nowhere. I don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about me. They can suck a dick. That's not my problem. Yeah. Come. Don't cry. Okay? You're not a wimp. So don't say that again or else I'll beat you up. Got it? Cheer up. I think they realise that this isn't just a walk in the park. And I think Steve is going to be the troubled child for getting over the edge of the building. He needs his confidence built up and, um, you know, he'll get over it. He has to, as he isn't going to have a job. From the safety of their hostel, the new arrivals anticipate the weeks ahead. I think Steve and Dom and me will be able to do the job. I don't know, we're all, like, we've all got different personalities and we're very strong-minded, like, in our own way. I've been out of work for a while. Oh, I'm raring to go, I'm ready to go. <laughs> I can't wait to get out there. I'm just feeling too, like, overwhelmed with everything. Like, I've never felt like this, like, for a long time. But this is getting me really, like, overwhelmed, like, seriously. Did I pack my straightness? Yeah. It's 7 a.m. in Toronto and time to get ready for work. Neil has a team of 60 working on buildings across the city. The new recruits will be starting with the basics, learning on the job with Tristan. And the first task is mastering the tools of the trade. The fewer movements we make, the easier it is. One window might seem easy, but it gets slightly more difficult when there are thousands of them to clean and you're dangling on a skyscraper. It's not as easy as, uh, as it looks. <laughs> not bad for your first attempt with the left. Do you think so? Yes, I think you have natural talent. One, down, bend, up, down, and swipe. And I can't fucking get rid of that bit again. I wouldn't be happy if my window cleaner did that to me. It's now time to tackle the grime outside. For speed, Tristan needs the new recruits to use both their hands when they're cleaning. Left hand for the left window, right hand for the right window. Oh, I can't do left hand. You will, at the end of this session, be neither left-handed nor right-handed. Oh, for goodness sake. You're making it a little more complicated than it has to be. Nice turns. Oh, seriously, I'm not in the mood. Like, I get frustrated easily. I just can't do window cleaning. Like, I don't know why I've been doing you this. Like. You sound like you're convincing yourself that you can't do this. Because I know I can. It's too hard. No, it's the not too hard. The left hand doesn't function. I'm, uh, I'm not practical. a bit of practice. The seemingly simple task has triggered old insecurities for Steve. <laughs> Can't wait, woman. They just. Just don't feel intimidating. I just don't feel comfortable in working with like other men. I just I fainted it like with school, like going into like 
sports. I fucking hate it. Like working with men, like gay bullied or gay to me courses, like everywhere. I just don't like working with men, and I just feel like they're taking the mick out of me because I just can't. I'm not practical. Dom's getting all like fucking. Oh yeah, you're doing good. I can't fucking window clean it for shit. Fucking shit. Like I don't like it. I've never been this emotionally stupid. Since his father left the family home when he was a baby, Stephen has gone through tough times without a close male figure in his life. I came out to my dad um, by text message, and that was like a few months later of coming out to like my mom and my family and my friends because I felt like he would be the la like the last one to like accept it. I got a text back saying, "Is this a phase?" And then um, the like the connection between us started going. I just don't think. I, well, I personally don't think that he accepts it that much. Maybe doing, like, a tough job will actually, like, show him that, actually, I'm quite capable. I'm still, like, a man. I'm still, like, his son. After work, Neil wants to see how his new recruit has been doing. Today was the first time you really tried oh, to yeah. use a squeegee, right? So what sort of expectations did you put on yourself? I just thought, like... It would be easier. Yeah. yeah but, like, so it, what no, did but, I like, tell you day one? I told you day one, it looks like it's really easy, right? But it actually takes some form of skill. You're not going to learn that over time. It's scary, like, if I'm annoying everyone, more like, because like, I can't do it. And I just, who not, gives like, a I fuck I who I you annoy? Like, I, don't, I don't care who you annoy. Remember, time, practice will get you there, baby. It's just doing me, I think, because I know, like, oh, I've got yeah, all the skills. Yeah, 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 but... but... <laughs> Stop right there. Right now, you're moving beyond today. I'm asking you to be patient, and I'm asking you to believe in you. Right, OK? Yeah. So don't listen to anybody else. In fact, don't even listen to you. Just listen to my instructors and listen to me. Right, OK? And clean a window. Period. That's it, baby. All right? <laughs> Ow. Over the next few days, Stephen is out with the ground crew. You're gonna put more into it, put more shoulder in it. My muscles are not used to this. If I get a tan, I'll, I'll be fine. Time is money, buddy. You gotta keep going here. As are Dom and Doss. You gotta put your back into it more, Dom. That's it, that's it. Did I do it? You did, you did. Get in! Doing it here is one thing, but doing it up in the sky is a whole nother ball game. Guys, we're gonna take a look at the future you. Now they've mastered cleaning, Tristan wants them to see what they'll be doing next. And we see a set of ropes. And we see a oh person up there. Oh, <laughs> uh, I can't do that. Like... <laughs> Oh, oh my, my god. god, oh my god, oh my god. Steps are gonna fall. Stop, oh. be careful. Oh my god. <laughs> be careful. And at this point, it's just business as usual. Wash your window, squeegee your window. Oh, it's hurting my head looking at her. <laughs> oh my god, why is she swinging so much? Oh, oh, she's swinging. Oh, fuck off. Do you guys think you can do that? Yeah. No. <laughs> Back at their hostel, they have a well-deserved night off. Uh, it feels hard. Wait, tell me how far up. Say when. There, because if you go too far up, it'll hurt. No, that's it. It hurts. The vein in your head's starting to come out. Oh, my God. When does the burning come? When does the burning come? After days of unfamiliar hard work, Stephen's body is paying the price. That's it! Oh, sorry. Oh, my God, that, like, seems like... No, 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 no. Whew. Feel better? I fucking feel worse, that's it. Oh, I'll be ungrateful shit. Going over the edge of a building for the first time is the scariest moment for any skyscraper window cleaner. Oh, you're done? And now, it's the Brits' turn to take that leap. Here See you guys. Uh, Darcy. Okay, so you're going to go over the wall with uh, Christoph today? Are you all looking forward to it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> no. What? I'm going to go off this to just get it out of the way. Get so you're going to be the first one over the wall? Well, well done. I like the fact that you jumped to the plate. 
That arm's just throwing off a edge. The bosun's chair is a short wooden plank suspended by ropes. It takes nerves of steel. But to make the big money, it has to be mastered. Oh, I'm doing the teeth chattering thing. <laughs> How am I going to sit in that, like, seriously? How am I going to get off the edge? It's scary. It's like, I'm, I don't want to commit. Like, I don't really want to die. OK, Stephen. <laughs> to get into the chair, you need to climb over the edge and push yourself off the wall to sit down. Oh, Christoph. Go, go. You're good. Everything's fine. But at over 100 feet in the air, it's a huge challenge. Oh. Uh, OK, hold on. I'm gonna stand here, and just in case I hold you, okay? Yeah. Go. I got you. You're not falling anywhere. Go. Stand on your chair. Go. Go. Is I'm on it? Go. Oh, fuck. Stand on it. Hold that all. You okay? Oh, it's moving side to side. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Now I'm gonna sit on my chair and I show you that. I'm shaking. We make the... Yeah, that's fucking perfect, oh. man. You gotta sleep. Your legs in. And then you gotta sit in. Oh. Uh... So look. Move your chair off, slip your, slip your foot in there. Uh, slip Can your I just foot. keep holding? Slip your foot in. Slip your foot in. Now the other one. Now the other 